you, Mr. Motorcycle. Thanks for making all that noise. Oh, hey, just reading a little book here today. I'm going to help you make a book that you can use for your next cosplay. It's not an ordinary book. It is a Necronomicon. Groovy. I made this with just a simple book, a little bit of liquid latex, and a little bit of imagination. So follow along as we help you make the Book of the Dead. All right, so we're going to make a Necronomicon or the Book of the Dead or whatever kind of creepy book you want to call it. And what I did is I went down to my local Goodwill store and bought these two books for a dollar a piece. These books are large. When you take the cover off, they have a nice base that we can work on. Um, but the thing is, they're quite, they're quite heavy. This book alone is probably four pounds. That's a pretty heavy book. But what you could do is take the time to hollow it out. You could actually put some of your camera or whatever you could put in there while you're at your local con or whatever. But this reduces the weight probably from five pounds to about two and a half or three. It might not sound like a lot, but when you're carrying this thing around for, I don't know, four or five, even six or eight hours, that weight difference will make all the difference in the world. So this is going to be the top and it's going to have the face on it. We're going to do this second because we don't want to have to do this side and squish the face while we're doing it. So just for the sake of doing this, a little bit simpler, again, thinking ahead before you start working, is we're going to start on the back. Now what I've got here is some latex and some cheesecloth. Ta-da! Cheesecloth. I think what we'll actually do is we will open it up. We'll have a couple of layers to work with instead of just one. Okay, so now we've got that figured out, I'm going to grab some gloves because this gets pretty messy. And also to mention it for later, you'll need some cotton balls. We're going to use the cotton balls to build up the face parts on the other side to make it look like there is a book that is bound in flesh. Alright, latex is messy. I'm going to pick this up at a Halloween store. I just happen to have it in one of these containers here. And I think I'll actually use one of these to get started. I'm going to throw some latex. We're going to try to keep this off of the pages as much as possible. Just because we don't want, we want to be able to open the book. And second thought, gloves work much better. It's a little mess here, but that's why we have gloves. Strangely enough, my camera said that uh, my memory card was full. I had a second memory card. It also said that one was full. So now we're down to zero memory cards to continue this. And I wanted to go ahead and finish what I was doing, so I just broke out my phone and turned it on and voila, new camera. And just to add a little depth and dimension, I'm going to throw some lumps in here. This will be some, just some raised areas for as we're working, so it's not completely flat. Now we'll add some latex on top of that, flatten it down a little bit. Now that I'm looking at it, it's very, let's see if I can get a little closer for you. It's got a lot of texture, but it's very crisscross pattern, you know, just like cloth would be. So I may go ahead and uh, add a layer of paper towel. Probably help to smooth it out. Very sticky. Now the paper towel will definitely absorb much more of this liquid latex and it will begin to tear at a certain point because it's just made of uh, very thin paper so that's something you have to keep in mind while you're making this you don't want to rub too much on it so use more of a padding motion to preserve it from ripping now if you want some rips in it just keep rubbing one spot and it'll rip through since we have layers you can actually kind of 
roll a piece up like that and do whatever you need to do to make the texture that you want for your piece. All right, I think that looks much better than it did with the with all the cheesecloth texture. What do you think? I think that looks much better. Don't worry about the color and stuff. We're going to paint everything. But I like the bumps, the lines, the texture. It's starting to look more like it was made of human flesh. Okay, our back layer of latex has had ample time to dry. And I've gone ahead and taken some baby powder, sprinkled it on top. I just used a regular brush to really move it around and such. You could do it with your hand if you want. But make sure the whole thing is powdered because latex is very, very sticky. And now we can flip it over and start on the next side. We want kind of a funny mouth on it. Maybe kind of an opening of a nose, if you can see that. And some eyes, something like this. So we have a basic idea of what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw in some gloves and we're gonna get to work. All right, just like the other one, we're gonna start by laying down a layer of latex. We're gonna make sure we overlap the latex on the back. We want it all to stick kind of together. So we're going to go ahead and get some latex on there. We'll make sure we're getting it around all the edges, wiping it off as we need, if we need to. Get that first base coat on there. Now that we got that on there, we're just going to take some cotton balls and kind of build up the face shape that we had. We're just going around the shapes that I made before with the marker. Just kind of build them up a little bit. So when we do cover it up, we can add some shape. And we're gonna add some more latex. You can use a brush if you want. I'm just doing it by hand because latex is notoriously difficult to get out of paint brushes. The downside of this is it really sticks to you. You could even, let's do this, let's try something different. We could put the cheesecloth over it, or we can go directly over it with our paper towel. Let's go ahead and do our paper towel. That'll kind of give it something to uh, make it look more like flesh, and it'll actually hold the, the uh, cotton down a little better than if I was just doing it with just my bare hands. Okay, that should help it stick from sticking to me too much. And we'll start dabbing it. We're not trying to get too much detail yet. We're trying to make sure everything is stuck down really well. And then we'll go back and touch over it. And really try to get the detail. So right now we're basically saturating everything. So it'll stick a little better. And when you get stuff like this while you're doing liquid latex, just throw it on there. It's supposed to be all gross flesh anyway, so why not? Make sure these eye sockets are open pretty good. Make sure there's good wrench for the mouth. You can add more, you can add more paper towel or cotton balls, whichever you wish. I'm going to try to roll up a little bit of paper towel. Let's see how that turns out for me. It feels much hardier than the cotton balls, which are easily squished under the uh, moisture and the pressure of my fingers and the latex. So we're going to go with that for now. Whoops, 
He just ripped his lip off. Again, giving a little extra around the edges. Now, liquid latex, I do not believe, is toxic in any way. But uh, it's giving off a pretty funky smell at this point. So something to keep in mind as you're working with new things. If you're ever in doubt, don't be afraid to open up some windows. I'm still working in my garage. So there you have it. The front and the back has had its first layer on. The back is probably good. This will have an extra layer put over it just because it'll probably get the most wear and tear and it'll be shown more than anything else. So I'll add an extra layer over this once this has dried up and I've added some baby powder. And uh, just, to, just as an extra layer to really toughen it up a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and give this time to dry and we'll be back. Okay, here's where we're at. What I've done is, after the first layer dried, I went through and, let me zoom in here. And after I was done, I took some, some tissue, just like this. I folded it a few times to make a thicker edge. Like this side, it's much thicker. And then I put it down, like here. I took another one and put it here. And what that did was made it look like two separate pieces. And once I had two separate pieces, whoop, wrong direction, on the top and bottom here, I added some staples. I have a regular box of staples and I just snipped them so they weren't quite so long. Not wide, but long. And I stuck them on here. I hit them with a little bit of super glue. And once they were on there, I covered it one more time in a layer of latex. And we're allowing this to dry. What this does is give it an effect of skin that was pulled around the book, pulled tight, and then stapled together. And I think that's going to add a little extra flair to the Necronomicon book that we're making. So I'm going to give this overnight to dry, and then we will continue with painting. Okay, we've gone ahead and put an extra layer on here, really covered up the stitching. Pretty good with staples. And I just powdered it with some baby powder did the sides as well. So I'm just going to knock all that extra baby powder off so we can move on to painting. You want to get as much of that off as possible. If not, it'll thicken up your paint as you're using it. Now just for safety purposes, I would recommend wearing a rust braider mask when you're working with anything that's fine powdered, uh, even baby powder, because baby powder has something they call talc. And talc, they believe and more recent studies can be pretty bad for you and your lungs. So you can wear a respirator or you can get the kind that's made with cornstarch instead. And the cornstarch kind is better for you. Won't uh, won't kill you. And that's very important. You can't cosplay if you're dead. So we've got this nice and dusted down. We are going to trim up the edges. Alright, the edges cleaned up pretty good. Don't have to be perfect. Again, this is just supposed to be a book bound in flesh. I think the finished face of it looks pretty good. And I think it is time for us to move on to paint. We're going to start with the brown first. So we're just going to try to take a little bit of the brown. Some of this desert sand color. sticks out. Let's see how this turns out. And I could probably be darker, so let's add a little more brown. Of course, whatever color you choose is up to you. You can make it as realistic as you want. Heck, you can make it purple. It's up to you. Okay, that should be dry enough to work with. So we're going to take just the brown, just to add some darkness to it. We don't want it to be completely a light color like this. We want it to be kind of splotchy. 
have some dark areas and whatnot. So we're going to take it, kind of get in the holes a little bit, darken them up so they'll stand out. Really want to make sure you get in all the little cracks and crevices. Really trying to focus on the deeper areas. It's got more of the deep areas. It's going to kind of just put a little bit, kind of like when we're dry brushing, just a little bit, wipe most of it off. And we're going to kind of just run across the surface. Just to kind of give it more of a color breakup. We don't want that solid color. That just doesn't look realistic. And once we've got this broken up, kind of got it highlighted and darkened in different areas to kind of break it up. We're going to give this time to dry. And then we're going to go over it. We're going to get the really dark spots, I'm sorry, the really deep spots with a, a black wash, kind of like we do when we weather it. All right, we're going to move on to adding some more depth to this with some weathering. What I have here is some black acrylic paint. It's already been watered down, so it's nice and runny. So I should be able to put it down in all these dark crevices and wipe it off with a paper towel from all the higher ridges to give it some more depth. I got a tissue here. I like to keep one dry and one wet. Some water. The wet seems to pull a little more of the paint off if you want some areas to not be as dark. I'm going to start off with the big brush just because I'm going to get a lot of areas pretty fast. Now that those are much darker, I'm going to take this and just do a quick quick wash over the whole thing. I might even water it down a little bit. You don't want to press down hard with your paper towel so you pull the paint off if you're not careful. I add a little more water to my paint just to thin it up a little bit. Just wiping up enough to leave some of the darkness in the crevices when I wipe away. I'm going to wipe away over the staples pretty good. Let that staple show through better. Alright, now that's come to life a whole lot more with just that one extra layer that we put on. I'm going to repeat this for the rest of the book. Now that I got that on there and given it time to dry, I'm going to go along the book pages with a little bit of this thin black paint that I have out right now. So what that's doing, it's giving the pages a look of being old and worn and cruddy. So I'm going to continue that around the other side with some diluted paint. Now the book is, looks, it does look a lot older. So I'm going to go ahead and quick dry this with my hot air gun. Okay, I've gone over it a little bit with my hot air gun. And here's where we are now. Looking much older and decrepit. I'm liking how it's going here. So just to add some finishing touches, I think I'm going to go back in with some thicker black paint, not my thin down, and touch up some of the areas. As soon as I find my black paint, there we go. Touch up, uh, darken up these edges here. I may even go back over with my silver paint and hit it on these staples. But the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking, no, I don't want it to be too shiny and stand out just enough I think to be good. So we're just going to do some touch up with our black paint. Darken up some areas that I feel like should be darker, maybe a couple corners. I'm doing it all as I go, go over the eyes, the nose, and the mouth to really make them stand out better. Now 
Now that we've got all the detail on there that we want, we're going to give it some time to dry really well and then we're going to finish it off with a clear coat. For this, we're just going to use a spray clear coat that I have right here. I picked this up at Home, no, Hobby Lobby for $5.99. It is Treehouse Studio brand. It is a matte clear coat. We don't want it to be extra shiny. But this will be enough to cover it up and kind of protect our paint job. Okay, our book has had ample time to dry out in the sun. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with a clear coat. Don't pay no attention to that. I overcut the pages so some of them flop out. We're going to hit it with a good clear coat. And give it a couple layers and give it ample time to dry and then we'll have a finished product. Anyway, make sure you work in a well-ventilated area or outside when you're using any kind of a spray can. I'm in the garage, well-ventilated, I have no concerns here. Alright, one more layer and we'll be all finished with our Necronomicon Book of the Dead. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go, you should think about stopping over and seeing me at cccosplay.com. There you can find articles and tips to help you take your cosplay to the next level. Also, if you sign up for the membership email list, I'll send you a few surprises and let you know about special things before anyone else has a chance to hear about them. It'll be our little secret. And remember, stay crafty.